mother became a single mom, and we moved to a part of Los Angeles that was equivalent to smoking two packs of cigarettes a day. And thank goodness we don't have that problem in Vermont. But I did recognize that there was that relationship between what your family is able to bring in for income, where you live, and what the quality of your environment is like. And so what I sought to do is figure out what does that look like in Vermont? What does that look like in a rural context? And that was my work in figuring out how we bring more justice to our access to natural resources, to recreation, to living in a healthy, clean community. And that is what I see as our greatest need and challenge in Vermont. And as some of you may know, I served for the last year as the vice chair of the Natural Resources and Energy Committee in the House and was able to bring a lot of that sensibility to our work. And what was really important about that is what we were hearing from Vermonters is that they wanted to move forward with a renewable energy future that would get us to 90% renewable energy by 2050. And they wanted to do that in a way that was inclusive, that recognized that people care a lot about their views and the historic nature of their downtowns, and that they want to see farms preserved and not lose all of our farmland. And at the same time, we need to move aggressively to advancing solar and wind and efficiency to make sure we can meet our renewable energy goals. And my chairman, Representative Tony Klein, really turned to me and said, you like all this planning stuff. You like working with the people. And can you figure out with the Senate, who had given us a bill that had a lot of issues in terms of getting passed on the House floor, how we advance a bill that gives communities buy-in and ownership over the renewable energy siting process while recognizing that we need to move forward. And so that's exactly what we did. We brought in the folks who really struggle with having wind turbines in their community, and we had them right alongside people in the renewable energy industry who want to plow forward as fast as we possibly can. And we really listened to everyone. And we realized that everyone wants to move forward with our renewable energy future. And there's very minor disagreements about how to get there. And so we crafted a bill that included a provision that said, hey, if you have a large scale wind project, lights out at night. Don't have those red blinking lights on top of the mountains that people know and love and have for generations. Make them radar controlled so that if a plane goes by, those lights go on, but otherwise they're off and they don't need to blink all night. And let's make sure that we deal with some of the issues that neighbors are talking about when they just want those wind generation sites to be good neighbors in their community, to reduce the sound, to reduce the visual impact. And so we asked the Public Service Board to put in place sound standards for all renewable energy projects going forward. That's the work we did. It didn't take so much for the people who are really opposed, who struggle with the sight and the sound of renewable energy and mostly wind in their community to say, we may not ultimately agree with the outcome, but we respect the process and we feel heard. And that is our greatest challenge and our greatest opportunity to support the advancement of renewable energy and curb climate change in the state, is to make sure that people feel a part of the process, they feel heard, and that they can be engaged, that they don't see it as an imposition, that Chittenden County or a more affluent community is telling them, we're just gonna put all of our renewable renewable projects and our wind turbines in your community and let you look at them. What we want is everyone to feel like they have ownership over that renewable energy, that they look at those wind turbines and they see something beautiful that's powering their community, their schools, that they feel a part of the benefit that they receive from that energy generation. As somebody who spent my entire 20s in the legislature who believes passionately in protecting the environment, it's incredibly important to me that my generation is heard, but that we're working with everyone in the state, that we're taking that torch and we're carrying it so that the renewable energy future that we desire is the same renewable energy future that our community desires. And that is the way that we will move forward in supporting our environment, in being an environmental leader and a thought leader on curbing climate change nationwide.
And I look forward to being a part of that as your next lieutenant governor. Thank you.